So, hey, I'm Chloe. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at YOLO underscore Karama. And you can follow my YouTube channel, which is Two Zealous Nerds. And it's spelled the number two dot zealous dot nerd. And this is Tin Pod Radio. Are you a fan of the classic Valiant comics? Do you miss Magnus meeting up with Fry? Do you remember when Solar was doing uh, adult things with EXO? Well, okay, no, that didn't happen. But you just never know what could have happened in the Valiant book in those days. From issue to issue, it was the best comics company going. So if you've ever dreamed in Barry Windsor Smith pencils, you might just want to check this out. I wish I was brave on Tin Pod Radio. Please don't fear me because I know what I want. Please deliver me that song out of your soul. It makes you freeze time, staring in at yourself. It's time to step outside onto the path you once made. Sabrina and Ken rushed out to get to their truck with both of them nearly falling on their asses a few times. They weren't in a total panic. It was panic mixed with fear, mixed with mixed feelings, mixed with reasons. Dressed in mismatched outfits quickly grabbed from the closet, this scene was one of two people in pure go mode. Go, go, go! As they descended the steps from their apartment, Sabrina almost broke her ankle with a stumble as she tried to get one arm through a Green Day hoodie which belonged to Ken. Ken steadied her unbalanced predicament whilst also taking the keys from her hands and guiding them both from the apartment steps into the parking lot area. They ran across the parking lot to Ken's truck. Well, it was their truck now, but he was the one who bought it, she's just making payments. It's complicated and the hostility is the sort of thing that happens when a couple really doesn't like each other very much, but are tied together by circumstances. Right now, circumstances have them in the middle of a dash. He turned to look at Sabrina as they both got into their seats and clicked their safety belts into the locked position. So we're heading to Florida, Ken said without it really being a question. Sabrina started to cry as she dropped her head and looked at her hands. Julie's my only family. Ken got the truck started after a couple of failed tries. Cursing while grinding the gears a little, which is a feat with an automatic, he pulled them out of the parking lot, nearly taking out a couple of their hipster stoner neighbours walking over from the complex pool, not paying attention. Then they nearly hit a cat crossing over to the complex's tennis courts for a bird snack that was waiting for him, but Ken swerved just in time and hit a parked car instead, crushing the side panels. He raced away as the alarm rang out from the car, and a fat old man came out of his apartment screaming profanities in a language unknown to either of them. They didn't really care what happened to get them on their way and on the road. They'd been looking for any excuse to leave this place for a long time, and a cosmic crisis fit the bill. They didn't have to say it, but the feeling was there. They weren't coming back here no matter what. It was time to move on. Settling down wasn't for them anyways. The fat man would, a month later, die in an accident involving two horses and a wood chipper. Don't ask. As they pulled out of the apartment complex, Ken reached over and touched Sabrina's shoulder. She looked up and into his eyes and smiled, which made him smile as he raced down the street. But twelve minutes after that, they were pissed at themselves for giving out those smiles. And in a nutshell, that explains their relationship. Except for the part I'm not going to tell you about yet. As his truck was starting to gather speed, Sabrina picked up a book that had been on the floor of the truck since she bought it at a library book sale two weeks ago. She started flipping through the pages. Not really reading, but thinking about how when things were straight and she knew Julie was safe, she was going to try and break up with Ken again. She didn't love him, and probably never had. No matter the destruction it might bring, no matter how risky it might be to her life, she needed to try again. But she needed him right now. He was a tool she couldn't throw away at the moment. 
The last time they tried to break up, it didn't turn out too good for either of them, and also wasn't great for a block of West Virginia homes. They hooked back up to try living in the settled down mode, but that wasn't working either. Ken was perfectly fine with it, but Sabrina was getting more and more tired of it, and now she's only fine with it being good for him to be with her for this trip. Then she would try again. Yes, yes, the world does need another Star Wars podcast because everything related to Star Wars needs a focus that can only happen when you give the second greatest story ever told its own show. Yes, let's get that out of the way. You will also need to learn that Star Wars is in no way the greatest story ever told. That would be the story of our Lord, Time Lord, the Doctor. Dark Lighter Speeder Biker Bar on Tin Pod Radio. her name. It's Mildred K. Betbeza. No one else has a name like Mildred K. Betbeza. No one else is cool enough to have a first name that means gentle strength, a last name from a member of the swing set, and a middle name so secret it grants a bit of power just to know what the middle initial is. If you know what the initial stands for, you get fire hands. Fire hands are always cool. There's also no one else who gets to be chased through the sewers of Salt Lake City by a group of fully suited up zombified varsity football players chanting kick, tackle, football, kick, tackle, football, kick, tackle. My mum always warned me about you football players, yelled Mildred's best friend since first grade, Aisha Z. Rusif, as she ran side by side with Mildred. So I guess she also gets the privilege of being chased through a sewer. But her name's Aisha Rusif, not Mildred Betbeza. Aisha wondered what her mum would say if she could have seen what she was doing. Her father was a football player and susceptible to being hypnotised just like these guys, but that's a story about a family vacation to the rainforest that turned out rather interesting as Mildred was along for that vacation also. A story for another time, though. Mildred stands five foot six, a 105 pounds, 
and possesses a keen sense of fashion, if you consider a keen sense of fashion to be someone who wears black cowboy boots, orange jeans and a black peacoat jacket worn over a variety of coloured t-shirts. This place smells worse than my bedroom, Aisha commented during the action. Not even close, Mildred thought to herself, having experienced that bedroom many times. Aisha's room was legendarily messy. Turn left, Mildred yelled, as Aisha followed her down a different tunnel with an even worse smell than the one they'd been running down for the past twenty minutes. Aisha's five foot four and a hundred and twenty pounds of attitude. Unlike her friend, she hasn't taken to thinking of her clothes as some sort of symbolic uniform, but then again she doesn't have any beyond human abilities. But superhuman powers are sort of boring to get into detail about, and we'll get to that later. Aisha also goes for a more 1950s tomboy look in her dress style than trying to stand out in any way. Because, you know, a 1950s dress style in 2013 doesn't stand out in any way. But then again, this is Utah. Aisha was surprised how clean these sewers actually were. Yes, the smell's worse than any boy's gym locker or late night find from the back of the refrigerator, but TV has lied to her over the years. There weren't any rats, formerly flushed alligators or poops floating. Or at least, none she'd seen so far. A few years ago, Salt Lake City spent a lot of money totally refurbishing the city's sewer systems to make it the most advanced and effective set of sewer systems in the world. Step one in the plan to make the City of the Saints the City of the Future. A lot of cities going for that title, though. It's a big ego thing. Mildred and Aisha ran, or more aptly sloshed, their way through the thigh-high brown waters. The good news was the zombified football players kept falling from time to time, so they weren't going to catch up with them any time soon. Cleats in sewers proved ineffective as footwear for the unfolding scene. Up! yelled Mildred, and she wasn't talking to any zombified football player that had fallen down in the muck. They both stopped suddenly and started climbing up a ladder. I hope you know where you're going. I'm not a fan of being trapped in any sort of maze. Minotaurs tend to turn up, remember? Wine, wine, wine. I have an eidetic memory. It's good for playing go fish with cops and remembering layouts. I glanced once at City Hall. Mildred easily pushed up the thick manhole cover, and as they both climb up and out, Aisha said, I wish I had an eidetic memory and beyond human strength and other stuff. Right now I just wish I was dry, though. God, I'm going to need ten showers after this. Mildred replaced the manhole cover. A strength that comes and goes is totally unreliable. Yeah, me, I still have to rely mainly on the things that don't start with super. Aisha's the only person Mildred ever showed any sort of weakness around. With her best friend she can have flaws and faults. Otherwise she has to remember to always speak with her Girl Scout Gold Award in mind. Aisha turned over a large crate that tumbled onto the manhole cover. She tapped against the sign on the side of the crate that read, Hand weights, quantity 200. That should keep them down there. I wish I could dump weights on the heads of football players every day. Aisha then notices where they are. It was the clear-cut high school, the school they attended as 8th graders, and they found themselves in the still-under-construction gymnastics gymnasium, the place they had 8th grade orientation in. It smelled like old people. You ran us in circles back here to the smell of Grandma Wilson. Aisha stated the facts to Mildred, trying to be sarcastic. Zombified people make me itch, so I'd rather not touch. Matter of fact, most magical things bother me, Mildred told her. Aisha put her head in her hands in frustration. So that's our only purpose for being here, your icky-dicky issues. We still have to get to the bottom of everything that's going on, and all of these are connected to sports somehow, Mildred explained. At least, no, Aisha was interrupted by every door in the gymnasium's gym opening, and in walked fully uniformed cheerleaders, zombified, chanting, Hero of the team! Hero of the team! Hero of... Zombies have a thing for chanting. Well, at least the ones with school spirit do. We hope you have enjoyed this free sample of The Tin Universe Middle Grade Series Book 1, written by Brian C. Williams and narrated by Stacy Taylor of Stacy's Pop Culture Parlor. Follow Stacy on Twitter at StaceBobT. Find more Tin Universe content at tinuniverse.blogspot.com. Copyright 2016, System Productions.